Welcome back, everybody. It's uh, been a few days here since yeah. we've had some Overwatch on the stream, but we are back. Last time, we had some nice Star League action. This time, going to be kicking off this Overwatch Collegiate Champions Spring 2023 here. Getting in to these first few rounds, Saints Varsity. This is going to be a double header today yeah. coming in. We got New Mexico State University here for round one, and George Mason, that's going to be their academy squad yeah. there coming in at 3 p.m., I'm Josh Buffundi, joined once again by Daniel Jobin. Jobin, how you feeling getting into this one? Uh, doing pretty good. Not typical. I don't think last semester we maybe had Overwatch twice in the same week. I feel yeah. like one time the entire semester, even though Overwatch was a little bit new in this semester, but That's Activision true. Blizzard is, you know, that weekend tournament that the Saints, I think they finished, I believe it was a top eight finish overall last year. They finished amongst like the ranks of, like the Boise and a lot of these mm. other top teams. They played very, very well this year. Just from what we've seen in A so far, I mean, things have gone good. Let's just <laughs> this squad is looking solid and granted this Overwatch squad has been looking solid all yeah. the way since Overwatch 1 yeah. since that weird transition period like <laughs> yeah last last semester we had some interesting times with Overwatch on yeah. the stream just with going from Overwatch 1 then into Overwatch 2 but nonetheless oh looks like we're getting straight into game these players don't like to waste time here in Overwatch Nepal going to be the first map actually Finally, not Li Jang. I mean, yeah, I know. Jeez. I'm surprised. I want to know who picked that. Was it NMSU or was it the Saints? Or I actually don't know how it works. I wonder if they just like agree on a map. Uh, I know like for a... Nath, there's like a set map pool of eight or nine yeah, maps. Yeah. And typically just like teams scrim certain maps all the time. So Li Jang is the most common. Activision Blizzard might have a slightly different map pool. So we might end up seeing a little bit of some variation. Although even though in Nath, it always is loser picks. But it seems to be the last couple weeks, loser always picks like the same three to four maps. So even though oh, yeah. there is like a nine map pool, quote unquote, we only see the same four or five maps so maybe we'll see a couple different maps today that's yeah. what i'm hoping i mean the saints are going to be looking for the same result nonetheless though. i mean the, the other day we actually saw para iso come out which was yeah. interesting like a lot of the times on that some teams one, hate that see, map i think it's is it elder or dorado and then oftentimes we'll see like route 66 sometimes circuit that, Royale, or, yeah yeah like it interesting maps to say the least no, but we have been given a lot more variety recently yeah. i think rather than just yeah Li Jang. Route 66, Circuit Royale, like, keep it going. Yeah, the only thing I wish, Nace, I think, I don't know if they're going to be seeing this tournament, Activision Blizzard. They, there's two new maps in the game. Ramatra mm -hmm. came out, Shambali Monastery came out, and then the Arctic Peninsula map just came out in this new season as well. So, a lot of new maps. Unfortunately, so, not going to get to see them, but this area on Nepal, I believe this is an inner sanctum or the temple part of the map. Definitely going to be very fun. The ball actually is a very, very strong pick on this map. We're going to see NMSU opting for the Roadhog early on, though, so definitely not the most typical comp that we're going to see. St. Clair playing something a little bit more traditional. Yeah, the, I think the Roadhog is something that's kind of fallen out of favor. He in got the past gutted. Past, I mean, gutted. for a reason. Yeah, don't get me wrong. Fallen out of favor for a reason. Because there was a time, I mean, if you look at any of these past games these Saints have played, there was a time where it was pretty much, you play Winston, if they're playing Winston, you switch to that Roadhog. If they're playing Roadhog, you switch to that Orisa. Yeah. And, and the rock, triangle paper, continues. Yeah, it's, it was literally a game of rock, paper, scissors. It was okay. I'm going to swap off this Emirate. one. We're going to counter swap. Emmerich finds a headshot, squeaking a boop Roadhog off the map. So that is one thing. Look at the team kill coming through. All five members picking up a kill there. A team ace, a team kill, and... That is why the ball and break are so powerful on this inner sanctum. There is so much room to knock all these members off the map, and especially a tank like Roadhog. Yes, you have a lot of HP. Yes, you can do decent damage. You are a walking, you're basically a statue. You are completely immobile. That ball, it's not like Arissa. Arissa, at least you can go golden. You can stop the ability to get knocked off the map. Roadhog, you don't have that escape ability. Squeak has already taken advantage of that crime, though. Gonna get taken out on the back line. I just love when you spectate the ball, how it's just this <laughs> third person it's really fun to watch. Ball. Yeah, I know. It's just hilarious that it's almost like they're not even playing a real character until he switches to that mode. And then he has 1,000 right HP. There. Yeah, 1058 in total there. And he gets to regen some Look of at that this. as well. You ever seen the main tank on a flank here behind this entire team? Even with that, NMSU can't find their way forward. Dragonheart trying their hardest to save that Roadhog there, but Crime's good for two. He takes down the tank, he takes down the support, and we've seen this so often from oh. the Saints. Once you get a good lock on this spawn, how does this other team get out? 
we've seen them do this to so many opponents, and they're right back to it here in this Collegiate Championship. Yeah, they're going to have that Katune rush the Saints, however. They're going to have pretty much every ultimate as well, and that's why the ball is just so powerful. Usually in Overwatch 1, the ball was that off tank. You had two tanks. You had like a Reinhardt, maybe something like the Arista to play the main tank. You send the ball onto the back line, try to cause a disturbance. Right now, though, now they're only being one tank in the game. Arissa going to be the correct swap for NMSU. They're going to hope it's not too little too late, though. Katsune Rush is going to go live. The Saints are going to answer with Transcendence. Red X has the brick, has the, the win button as well, as we like to call it. There's the, the rally. The pole, that's what you said. When Brig was broken, they say, oh, Brig's hitting the win button. Yeah, it was I mean, so honestly. broken back in the day. Crime has the pulse bomb, but honestly, it's not going to matter. That's going to be round one. Yeah, overtime running away from NMSU there. And 100 to 0, not even 1% to come through. The first hold was good. The Saints were able to just barely grab that one out, actually. I think when they first grabbed that point, I don't actually think anyone from NMSU had died yet. It was just kind they of did. They just forcing them off the point exactly. But after one or two team wipes, next thing you know, NMSU stuck in their spawn, staring at this timer tick up from 80 to 90 to 99. They burn the ultimates at the end. Dragonheart tries to come in with that Kitsune rush. We saw ML there on the Orisa try to get on the point, but your 1v4, no healers left. Not much you can do in that situation. 1-0 for the Saints here as we get in to this next point. This has this has been another one that I think we've seen the Saints do so, so Ooh, well on this queen. one. And a quick little TP to come out of the start. Both teams actually opting for that Symmetra TP. I just saw two players switch back yeah. in that last second there. Dragonheart getting super low. Is he going to get pushed out? There's the cleanse to come through from Zippy there on the Kiriko. Squeak on the Junker Queen. Yeah, she did get a pretty... Decently sized buff recently, I believe. If, if, she, oh. get, if she gets any whole hammer in, good for two there. I believe if she gets extra bleed damage now, it reduces the cooldown on her knife. So the more people you land your abilities on, it keeps reducing that cooldown. And I think she gets maybe a little bit more like lethality or life steal. So they, they gave her like a decent enough buff where she can be a lot more playable now. Because before, she just got hard countered by so much of the roster. Didn't have the damage output, didn't have the HP pool really. She was kind of stuck in that mid ground. But that's because during Overwatch League early on, she was like, she completely broke the entire game to like the level Sojourn did. So they had to like take her down eight, nine, ten levels there. Now she's in a much better spot though. I say, and that's the thing you start with Symmetra in the ball. You get early on, you take the point nice and early, and then you just play off this high ground. Emmerin, so strong in this window. I mean, we saw earlier in the week too, Crime and Emmerin, these two, they are just a dynastic duo together. I mean, Arjunk here on the Brig as well. We had seen Redix on the Brig earlier this week. Arjunk taking up the mantle this time and just going full force in their dog. And it works out in the end. Four kills to come through. These respawns have to wait for NMSU, but the t time is ticking away. The percentage is going up. Arjunk got that uh, that win got button, the win button. Hand, like you said there, but Emran. I mean, Emran finds one good pick here, especially and on someone like the Zippy. Oh! Zippy was able to trade one back, but with both your DPS and your support down, Squeak goes in there. 700 health to his name. Our junk right behind him for the support. There's that tower that that coming in through, but is it ah. enough? Is the question. Even with this low health pool, like you said, as long as you're doing something on Junker Queen, right? You have to just be impacting the game. You're always going to have that that passive bleed healing yeah. to oh, come nice through. Shot. That's the main thing, really. Highlight. Gonna hit a highlight there on Emran in that Widow duel. Yeah, this is basically one of those uh, Widow 1v1 custom lobbies with uh, somewhat of an Overwatch game happening around it. Now, <laughs> we are gonna see the Genji mirror swap, actually, and we're gonna see Robotra get busted out as well. So, Squeak, though, he's gonna pop that Rampage. He's gonna take out two to kick things off. That anti-heal, so powerful on the Rampage. Two are gonna fall. Red X finds Zippy with the boop. Genji's going down. It's all on to Ramatra. ML is not long for this world. He falls to Red X, too. The Saints control the spawn. They control the tempo. They control control this map, and they're going to control a one nothing series lead. Squeak having some fun there. Yeah, I mean, NMSU can't walk out. Squeak stands there. Yeah, yeah, obviously they're going to shoot him down there, but 98%, 99 ticking up. It's a quick first map for the Saints here. We're going to have to see we're gonna have to see what comes in second map because as per, you know, Overwatch standard, this is NMSU Crimson's pick now. They get to choose what they're going to play on. I believe it's that that hybrid map that comes in on the second, if I'm not mistaken. Like, Art swinging for the just fences. Hold down left click, guys. <laughs> 
listen, it's like Reinhardt Jr. just running, yeah. the, basically just clubbing the enemy team there. But the Pretty Saints much are Reinhardt Jr. I, yeah. Even lore wise, that's, that's true. Technically, that's what, like the way this game, like the meta has kind of changed. Like break a lot of these other characters that like we didn't see even like one percent like a month or two ago. Now we're seeing a lot more coming to the fold, and that's mm. why it's good to have a deep hero pool. The Saints they can play a bunch of different tanks, squeak ball to Ramatra if he needs it, Arissa, whoever he has to play, he can fit that one in. We see the two DPS. I mean, watching Emmer hit headshots all day. It's just like every single map, regardless, of, even if Widow isn't like the best choice still finds a way to make it work yeah and i mean even if it's not the best choice the best choice is always have your entire enemy team dead so <laughs> stuck it's always spot. the best choice <laughs> for emmer in there whether he be on that widow whether he be on that sojourn we saw for a little bit on that first yeah. point the sojourn came through he got bored headshot railgun <laughs> yeah. railgun like it just comes through the headshots stack up when that player is on any kind of precision based DPS. Yeah, I wonder if he's like gets to the point too where he's just hitting every shot on Sojourn. He's like, I'm kind of just like, I want, I need a little more ent <laughs> give entertainment. Me, give me Widow right now. I need a rush. Yeah, put me on a Widow. I need something with a little more fire in the hip fire in the system there. But I'm not sure. I think we should be. I think we're just switching sides quickly. It looks like uh, Nepal is still the map that's hovered. So not sure exactly what map it's going to be. It might be loser's choice. Not sure exactly what it's going to be. But I think that being said, maybe we'll throw it to a very very quick break. I think we'll throw it to a 30 second break here. Come right back with the next map. <laughs> did not end up going either team's way. A little bit of damage back and forth, but no headshots or no initial picks to come through. Well, you know what both those Widows are looking for, right? When this round pops off here, Squeak goes in, is able to find the first pick there. Oh my and goodness. there it is. The devastation starts to come through on this initial push. The stagger as well. Zippy's yeah. gonna be down for so much longer than the rest of his teammates there. That's a good another five seconds choked oh. off here for the Saints. Got this double sniper comp, triple sniper <laughs> comp coming through for the Saints. Oh, oh cheeky. Oh, Emran whiffs that one. Highlight, not necessarily sure that he's there though. Emran okay, yeah, right, yeah. right up in their face. That's crime though, to find the headshot. Look you win Emeryn. the sniper duel. Arrow versus actual sniper. Arrow's gonna win. Red X on that DPS Lucio. This Saints team feeling confident. We call this map Saints Row around here, and there's a reason. Yeah, I just, they're doing such a good job. And this triple sniper comp, they ran it earlier in Nace as well on a couple different maps. Look at our junk. They're all lurking on the side wing. So they love to get this little setup here. You get that early chip damage with Ana. You get that instant. Oh, it's y'all. There's Jivey. He's going to find that arrow over onto Emerin. Finally get that Widow off of her perch, at least for the moment. Squeak still over on this Junker Queen, too. So the Saints, I think this is a game where they want to try a couple different things. There's the Rampage. Highlight's going down. Jivey's going down, too. A massive Rampage from Squeak. The cleanse is going to come through. But Squeak is going to ball the drive. Dragon's got unleashed as well. Crime doing his best to hold in this spawn. Dragonheart's gonna fall. Now they have to work their way back toward this point though. And MSU finally giving a little bit of a fight here. They almost get the first tick. And just as I say that, 
Wipe, wipe, wipe. They are knocked back and they're gonna have to reset again. I mean, first game on that Widow is almost an all Emerin show there, but sometimes we forget that Crime is just as Ooh, solid nice of a shot. sniper as Emerin here. Crime is gonna fall to Jivey. It's uh, the 1v1 between those Hanzos, but you weren't able to grab that first pick if you're NMSU. The hammer's gonna come down. Squeak doesn't even die from Huge it. Huge beat. Beat is dropped. The Saints are still in this fight. Squeak almost back to full health there as well. 91% on this pulse bomb from Emerin, but the headshot comes through. He's gonna fall. Jivey, there's the pick on the DPS there. Arjun's also down. This is your chance to get onto this point. You gotta make this happen now. Russ, you're gonna be waiting for a whole nother spawn. Zippy falls, he had beat ready as well. Bleed. This could be devastating for them. Squeak's just gotta stay alive here. Yeah, that was a huge cleanse by Dragonheart to keep that Reinhardt alive. And now they're gonna find a couple picks. There is turret mode Bastion trying to mow down these Saints. The Pulse Bomb, though, takes out ML, and Emerin is gonna escape. This Tracer so tricky to deal with on the backline. Arjunk, he's laying down the Shuriken too, finding a lot of damage. Dragonheart's gonna have to retreat. And that was such a heavy investment for NMSU. They're gonna have those ultimates back online. They're gonna have to make a good work with them, though. Having that beat, having the Dragon's definitely gonna be game-changing. But the only problem is the Saints are gonna have a couple things back their own Wait, here comes the Bastion ult. Try to at least zone off. Get Sune back the other way. The Rampage comes through. Red X is going to fall, though. That's going to be numbers advantage for New Mexico State. They're going to try to make something happen now. Squeak, try to get the bleed damage. The beat comes online as well. NMSU putting everything they can into this fight, trying to finally get this point taken over. That should be that point. Keep in mind, I say should, because you've still got Crime and Emerin here trying to contest this one. And Red X speeding back into the fight there on that Lucio. They grab the second point, but... Players DPS, Lucio there, There's and Frogger. we're back to contestion. 20 seconds to go. Saints, you've got most of your respawns to come through now, and you're able to get a ton of damage. Oh. There's one DPS down, the second looking to fall as well, and you want to take down this tank. No way so you just close. shut down that third point. They were so damn close, and now by the time they get back, Red X is going to have to beat anyways. It's not even going to matter. They're going to have to do their best to try to get on this third tick, but it looks more likely that it's going to be gone at this point. The frontline damage is too strong. Emberin holding that front door closed. Arjung finding another kill, and it looked so close for New Mexico State. They just couldn't get over the hump there, and now they're going to find themselves in that unenviable spot of having to basically play flawless. Keep in mind, as far as I know, these are best of threes yeah. in these early rounds here. This is match point for the Saints here. All you got to do is find, I guess, halfway through that third Win tick. one team fight. Yeah, essentially. Legitimately. You get... Especially because the Saints have been so good at staggering these players yeah. as well. On defense, you stagger even just one support, and that is 30 to 40 seconds. That player is not going to be in the fight, or at least not going to be as active in the fight. Unless it's someone like the Kirko who can yeah. insta-TP back, it's going to be hard for them to make this happen. You already see this is like a lockdown comp trying to come through from NMSU. Jivey going to go in on that Torbjorn Ramatra from ML there. We saw him pull out the Ramatra at the end of the last map, but wasn't really able to find much value as they pretty well just still got shut out in their spawn when it was picked, but it was a, a last second decision yeah. nonetheless. Yeah, Saints gonna opt for a little more uh, a little more in your face comp. They're gonna add that Reaper back. They're gonna have the Queen. They're gonna have Red X, so they're gonna wanna get in this face of NMSU. They're gonna wanna brawl out that Ramatra. Maybe on high like the five the soldier. And NMSU, have to play, like I said, you're gonna have to play flawlessly because the way the Saints played that, if they find that third pick, one team fight, typically, eyes on crime. Yeah, eyes on crime. Typically, one team fight gonna guarantee you, you know, a tick and a half, maybe give or take, depending on the stagger. You want to like that second team fight. Usually, that's gonna take more than you. And you can see New Mexico State, they are very much aware of crime wants to get on to this little maker, but Squeak is gonna get going on the front line. Most guys is gonna be that first tip the ball. And the Saints have this numbers advantage. I would not be surprised if they are. I'm waiting for the good shot, anti. But the anti heal is huge. That's the oh, one. Oh, three minutes. Oh my lord. Arjun, is that the game? That is going to probably be the game. Maybe one more team fight if the Saints don't zone them off. But Emerin, the stagger, that's what we talked about. And when you're playing 5v5, not 6v6, that stagger is infinitely more impactful. A triple, potentially quad anti there from Arjun, deleting NMSU. Now they're gonna swap over onto the Doofus to try to get some, you know, get some speed back to the site. Yeah, try to get that touch, but it doesn't matter. The Reaper is so good on the front line, only on the Lucio now. And that's all she wrote for this map and all she wrote for the series. The Saints are gonna take this first round matchup. No. 
I have a reaction that I mean. I hope play the game is the AD. I know it won't be, but I hope play the game. It won't be. It's gonna be either the Reaper. Oh, it actually shipped. I was gonna say. No, I would count if it was three or four members he actually got with the AD. But just a beautiful setup. Gets the and Back they get the right cleanse. Now, the key thing is they got that cleanse burn just moments before that anti goes through. So Kiriko, Kiriko would have cleansed all three of them. They get the cleanse burn five seconds before. They get that timing right on the cooldown. They know no cleanse, no cleanse. Chuck that anti and then remember, gone. Yeah, Kiriko and Anna have actually kind of become that like those counter picks to yeah. each other, right? Which is pretty cool because for a long time you got anti and you were basically just I have to hide behind a corner yeah. or I die. Yeah, the cleanse. Yeah, the cleanse definitely one of the more like broken abilities. The cooldown on it though, like I said, long enough where as soon as that cleanse gets burned, that's why you have to have that team. That you have to have good communication. Hey, cleanse is down. Just one ability being on well, cooldown like literally changes the entire team, but because then you have no way to heal. All oh, it's crazy. Three of them just grouped up literally a little two by two, but two supports in their DPS oh, all wiped out with one with pop. Yeah, one fell suit from way down. Arjun playing it. Arjun, he's got like, the three-point contest later too. He's got to get an all-star weekend. Got to be a part of that too. But with that being said, I think we'll wrap things up for now. We'll have that second game against George Mason University. I believe the start time is scheduled for three, and let's say start earlier or something like that. So we'll catch everybody back here in a little bit. More Overwatch 2 action.